Hello, my name is Tatlun Penry. I'm a solitary pagan witch and author and the founder of the Wolf and Howl Press. And that is my clock. I timed that badly. Uh, actually, it's not supposed to go off on the quarters, but it's decided to today. Right, okay. Uh, today's little chat is about house blessings. Uh, as usual, you will hear some strange snoring noises. This is my dogs. They fall asleep. Uh, house blessings. Why do we do them? Uh, I think the thing about houses, they're very personal. Homes. They don't have to be a house. It can be a room somewhere. It can be an office. Uh, they're very personal to us and they do absorb a lot of our energies. Now, if we move out, unfortunately, a lot of those energies can stay behind. Um, it can also happen if someone in the house moves out um, and perhaps leaves unpleasant energies behind. Um, it can be a friend or family member who is staying with you, you know, and they can move out and leave some awful energies behind. I knew this when I was a kid, you know, it was really dreadful sometimes. Um, but uh, I think there's a need sometimes to almost clear things away, have a fresh start. Now, as I've mentioned before in these little talks, I'm a great believer in the as above, so below uh, saying, and it comes from the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus. Um, and basically it means that whatever we do here on Earth, the microcosm, is reflected and echoed up in the cosmos, the macrocosm. Uh, so, if we're going to start with house blessings, what do we want? We want to bless the house, yes. But first of all, we want to cleanse it. And that means we need to clear away a little bit of the energies that were left behind. Now, the reason I say uh, a little bit of the energies is because a lot of the energies that uh, will be left behind are actually quite benign. They're quite pleasant. Um, there may have been very sweet people in the house or home before you. And you don't want to wipe it all out and start with a sterile space, I hope. I hope we're grown up enough that we feel we can absorb some energies and not others. So I think the first thing always, um, and we're going to get onto this in a later uh, video in this particular batch, uh, the first thing always is, as above, so below, begin by cleansing. If it's physically clean, it will be psychically clean. And then you can put your blessing over the top and hopefully all will be well. So you begin by getting up dust. Now dust is a devil for uh, absorbing energies. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure whether it's the weight of the dust holds the energies down or whether the energies get into the dust. I honestly couldn't tell you, not at this stage. I may discover it one day and then I'll let the world know. But um, for some reason, dust really, really does attract energies. Now, if the energies are all yours and they're all good, fine, have a dusty house, I do. But if you're moving somewhere new, then it makes sense to give things a quick polish, quick clean over, get the dust out, clean the corners out, corners are terrible. Um, look at areas like um, cellars, lofts, I don't mean you have to crawl into the loft space, but maybe if you have an attic room. Um, rooms that are not used often, these will have uh, stagnated and you do get some odd things come where the air is very stagnant, where the house has been shut up for a while. So clean it all up. In the same way if you're going to clean, um, aim to put nice smells into it. Now this sounds a bit like an advertisement for disinfectant and I know this, but the people who make disinfectant are actually rather clever on this. They know that if something smells clean, people will think it is clean. Uh, in the same way as if we go into a house and we smell polish, we think the owner has been polishing. They may not have been, they may just have been spraying polish around to make it sound better, smell better. But uh, in the same way, you know, I would advise things like putting up some dried lavender, potpourri perhaps, um, all the clean smelling things like lemon and lavender and um, 
pine is another very popular and disinfectant because it smells clean. And if you take the view as above, so below, then if you make it smell clean, you're helping things along. In fact, the word lavender comes from the Latin word lavare, which means to wash. So, you know, you can see that the two are linked and have been understood for a long time. There are lots of ways of blessing the house. Uh, the actual cleansing I'm going to go into, as I said, in another video. Uh, but when you bless a house, what are you trying to do? You're trying to take your blessings. Lots of ways of doing it. Um, you could make a little solution of uh, lavender water. Rose water was traditionally used a lot in cleansing. In fact, um, in the Middle Ages, uh, at the fall of Jerusalem, um, when the Crusaders, the uh, Christians, were driven out, the um, Salah al um, he uh, ordered that the um, mosques should be cleansed with rose water. So rose water has a long tradition of cleansing. A very good one to do. What do you do with it in your house as part of your blessing? Well, you can just go around and sprinkle a bit. You can make a little herb brush out of uh, whelk, the little herbs tied together. Thyme is great because thyme is quite cleansing anyway and it's very fine. You don't want anything too big because you use up the uh, solution much quicker. But you can take your little bunch of thyme, I tie it with a bit of string and sort of go around and dip it in whatever you're using um, and just sort of sprinkle it around a little bit, don't go soaking things and say, you know, may this space be blessed, may all who live in the house be blessed, uh, may blessings fall upon all who live here, you know. The simplest approach is often the very best, it's the most powerful and the most effective. Why? Because we say what we mean. We don't dress it up. We don't put frills on it. We don't pretend to make it rhyme. I mean, in my view, bad rhyming has been responsible for the failure of an awful lot of magical spells. Um, people become obsessed with the rhyming and the rhythm and the stresses and they forget what it was they were trying to say. So. Don't do that. Just go around and, you know, there's a, um, there's a wonderful old Irish blessing. God bless all here. Lovely when you go into a house, isn't it? And, you know, you can adapt that. We can, we can go into our new home and say, um, may all who are going to live here be blessed. May all who enter this home be blessed. May blessings fall upon those who enter this home. It's simple. Very, very effective. And as I say, if you begin by a little bit of gentle cleansing, not spring cleaning, I'm not talking about spring cleaning, I am not talking about going round the house with sugar soap unless it's caked with grease or something. Uh, don't do that. Just gentle cleansing. That's all you're trying to do. You may find in future when you've lived there a while that there are energies you're not entirely comfortable with. But you deal with those on a sort of ad hoc basis. You deal with them when you need to. Don't go in there like with a water can and trying to cleanse everything. Because you're not. You're wiping everything out. The good and the bad. You're throwing the baby out with the proverbial bath water. So go in. Make your peace. You know this is a terribly important concept. When you move somewhere new, you have to make your peace with the place. There are spirits of the land, spirits of the home, spirits of the hearth, the lares. There are all sorts of beings and entities around us that we don't give proper respect to them. And so I would strongly advise the very first part of a house blessing is to go in and make your peace. Never forget to thank a house either for sheltering you. It's a very good habit to get into, you know. Um, if you've just moved in and there's been an awful storm, well, make a point of saying thank you to the house, the flat, the room, for sheltering you. Uh, it may be, as when we moved here, um, <clears throat> the shelter was a little bit dodgy. We had rain coming in and things, <laughs> slates flying off. But you still thank it for what it does. You don't curse something for what it doesn't do. 
And this relationship that we build up with inanimate objects, such as homes, uh, becomes a surprisingly powerful one, you know? You, you try to uh, get the place, the spirit of the place, you try to get it on your side. You both want the same thing. Because you have to bear in mind, you know, um, if you're moving into a place where somebody has lived for a very long time and then left, um, the house might miss them. It really might. Or if somebody um, has moved out and didn't want to go, um, it, it's particularly the case if you visit a house where perhaps the mortgage company have foreclosed and the people who lived there really didn't want to go. And you pick up this terrible, terrible sense of sorrow. And it's a very uneasy house. It really, it isn't quite sure what to do next. Um, so, you know, as I say, make your peace with the home. Make your peace with your new abode. And love it. Tell it how much you love it. Tell it how wonderful it is. Even if it's not particularly wonderful, still tell it that it is. Because, you know, houses are made of stones, bricks, all sorts of minerals. And these minerals are, they come from the depths of the earth. And, uh, I believe they absorb a great number of things. So treat the new home as your friend. Bless it often, bless it well. Tell it how much you love it. Thank it for its protection. And that really is the essence of a house blessing. And I hope that helped a bit. And thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.